Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Shadow XL variant of Polyrath in the Open Ultra League and we're going to have a very strong team here right now. I actually played a different team before which I really didn't like and so I swapped to this one here with the Shadow guys going the lead and the say swap of the Dapple. Dapple is a say swap is just so overpowered right now in the Open Ultra League. So if you have a decent Dapple, even like one that's close to 100%, try to walk it because you have like one kilometer as the walking distance so you get the XL candy fairly fast with this Pokemon, but otherwise, we're going to have here, of course, a lead that doesn't really like to encounter Ice-type Pokemon, which Polyrath really likes to encounter, but it's going to be very decent against uh, those Fighting-type Pokemon, of course, our Pokemon, as I say, up here is just so, so strong, so, so neutral, but yeah, um, if you want to see also a review for the Shadow Poly Toad for the Ultra League, then leave a like on the video, would appreciate it, I also skipped half of my community day so I can make this video right now, because usually, I just have my Go Plus on the back Run, but as you maybe already saw in a video prior where I talked about it, right now Pokemon Go Plus Plus is bugged and going to freeze your game. This happened to me in the first set like twice in the two times where I had the Go Plus connected to it. So definitely make sure that you don't have the Pokemon Go Plus. I think it's also for the same for like Gotcha or any other um, catcher. Right now connected, it's bugged, it's going to freeze your game a lot of times. Not guaranteed, but a lot of times during Go Battle League. But yeah, here we're going to have a very, very nice team. Yeah, I really went positive with this team, had a lot of fun playing this one, and we can start commentating a little bit more about it. We're going to have here an Lolan Muck against us, which can still go for an Acid Spray, which is a little bit annoying, but the final Pokemon going to be as Grafty, and we're going to go straight for the Earthquake here, going for the big, big boom, doing a ton of damage here, and also forcing the opponent to either forfeit here, use a shield, whatever they want. As the Knights are just coming through, they're going to let this move go through, but like, what do they think going to happen here right now? Foul play can knock me out, but we have still our double and they know there is no way of winning this game for them anymore. Nothing in the back could be beaten at this part of time. As they're going to encounter a little bit of an issue for this team, which is going to be the Jellicent. If you play this team, most likely something like an Obstagoon is a little bit better for this team just because of Jellicent, the matchup in the lead. If you boost in the beginning, okay, totally fine, you're going to be able to have a great matchup here. If you don't boost in the beginning, it is really, really bad, to be fair. And we're going to see here that we're going to get them low. And I should play it out a little bit differently. I should have swapped out way earlier already. Like, basically, after hitting the second charge move there. And then I would have still be able to just keep my Gliscor around. Would have still baited out maybe a potential answer in the back. And we're going to see what answer they're going to have. They have exactly the Verizian in the back. And this is basically how you dot play this team. Um, you kind of want to try to swap out into Dapple to bait out the Verizian. So your um, Pokemon in the back, the Power Punch variant, by the way, of the Shadow Polyrath doesn't have to face it. And then you're still going to have your Gliscor to deal with the Verizian. So Verizian is a very common pick right now. So this is something that I played just fairly poorly. That's definitely on me here, not really on the team. Um, so next time, if you're going to encounter a Jellicent, Try to go for two Night Sashes, try to get them low, but then you can try to swap out, because even if you're going to end up later on in a scenario where Polyrath is against it, you're going to still be able to knock them out most likely, just because you already got them low enough that one squad is going to be enough. But a lot of times, people are, say, swapping Warrain right now. And Warrain definitely does not want to face the Shadow Polyrath here with Counter and Power Punch, as we're actually going to be able to even farm them all the way down before they can go for an Isaac Spear afterwards. Which will allow me now to get out of this matchup with a ton of energy. This gold basically stored here right now and also a buff onto my attack, which of course this boss will does not appreciate. And I expect that they're going to have a Lapras in the back because this is a team that I made a video about. And uh, judging by them being that high up, this team definitely seems to work out fairly well for them. So definitely a very cool team here, but I recently made a video about it, so they most likely watch it. So if you're that guy that made like this, like made this team by my video maybe, and you watch this right now, shout out to you. But yeah, we're going to see here that we're going to get the shield. The only thing that I have to do here is shield because this thing is they have to hit a skull bash basically to win this game. They have to get the defense boost here with the Lapras in the back and uh, they have to get the damage onto me. And even if I shield a surf there, it doesn't matter because I'm still going to get the normal damage onto the opponent. They don't get the defense buff then and I'm just going to outspam them anyway. So that ball again here is just going to be a too hard of an answer for the opponent's Lapras. My team was just a hard counter team to the opponent's team. Like that's to be fair there. Like there was nothing the opponent can really do here. They have two ice types in the back. I have two uh, fighting type fast move users in the back. Plus they have a 
Bug and Fighting type Pokemon in the lead, while I have a Flying type in the lead. So next opponent here going to have an Ampharos on the lead, and this is actually a matchup that I didn't know how this is going to play out. And you're going to see here right now that this is going to be a very interesting as we're going to be able to go for a Night Stash. This is going to go ahead and get the shield against the opponent. But um, we're going to see as well that the Brutal Swing is coming through, we're going to get the shield as well. And I'm actually super low here. It is wild how much damage Shadow Ampharos is actually doing in this matchup. The Ampharos is so, so strong right now. But here yeah, I will be able to swap out in time into my um, Dubwall. But sadly, I'm going to get Hardwalled here by the Verizian, which is something that I don't want to face here, of course. And we're going to encounter now that we can go ahead and go for a chart move here. But we have two options. Either go for another body stem and try to get them low, or try to make the opponent uh, forced to throw their own charge move there. I'm gonna go for the body stem here to try to get them a little bit lower, but it's a little bit tough to play this one out. As I can go ahead and go for one charge move here, I'm going to be the Night Slash, but as we're going to see right now, I can let this move go through that they still have some energy stored right now. So I will not be able to go ahead and farm them all the way down here. They're still going to get to another charge move. And we will see that I am not going to be fine here as well because they're going to be able to get to another charge move as well, which is going to be the Thunder Punch of the Ampharos, which is kind of rare to be seen. And now we're going to encounter the final Pokemon, which is going to be the Jellicent here, which is going to be, of course, a complete hard counter. There was nothing I could have done in this matchup. The lead was basically the best part of it still, but my bike line completely got hardwalled by the opponent's back line. So there was no lot that I can really do here. But yeah, next game we're going to have another boss ball in the lead, which is going to be nice. As they go for the um, super power, I can go ahead and go for the earthquake right now. That's going to force a shield by the opponent as I have to swap into my double right now. I have a shield advantage, which is going to be nice, but I have to keep my Gliscor around for the opponent's boss ball. Otherwise, I'm going to have some problems later on, as both of my fast moves of my backline going to be res resisted by the boss wall. As my opponent going to bait me first, but though goes for a brutal swing, and I can go for the body slam spam. Well, my fast move is double resisted against the opponent. Upon the wheezing here, I still will be able to do a ton of damage with the body slam spam. I'm gonna do more than they do with a brutal swing, but of course, they have the option to go for an overheat here. Which they don't. They have player of on this Pokemon. Interesting the, that they have this one here. But now we're going to encounter the next Pokemon coming in. Going to be a Skunk Tang. But something funny is, Potty Wrath kind of hard Skunktang. Skunk Tang. Yes, the fast move going to be neutral. But usually, Skunkting is not running the Sludge Bomb. They're running Flamethrower as coverage move for all the Steel types. So here, as you're going to see, they're going to run Crunch and, of course, the Flamethrower, allowing me to hardwall their back, uh, but basically hardwall their um, final charge moves there. So I'm going to be able to now go ahead and go for the Scald, and I will be able to knock out the opponent's buzz wall. Great play by them. Now it's coming down to if I can beat this opponent's um, Galarian Weezing. We're going to see the Brutal Swing coming through. I will be able to go ahead and go for the Night Slash here, but no, they're going to be able to win CMP and the Brutal Swing from the opponent is coming through first. And like this, we're going to now be able to still farm down with the double kick of the um, double there, which is going to be very nice. Next game, we're going to have here the Weezing again in the lead. A Pokemon that I don't really like to face with this team as our backline kind of struggles with it, but also our lead does not want to get hit by Overheat, so I'm going to shield up the first move and they're going to bait me. If they can bait me, I can bait them as well, as we're going to now see that we're going to get the shield from the opponent and I can go for an Earthquake, but this is going to be a CMP tie. I'm going to shield, it's going to be the Overheat this time around, which would have done a ton of damage here. But I will be able to hit the Earthquake and boom, goodbye there, Weezing, as we're going to encounter a Credilly coming in. And at this point of time, I was like, should I swap out here, should I not swap out here? It's a little bit risky because Credilly, if it has energy, going to be able to go for Grass, not against our Pokemon in the back. But as they're staying in here right now, I feel kind of that I'm still going to have a fairly decent chance of winning this game here. I can go for one Payback against the opponent, which is going to get the damage onto them, which is really nice. But we have to still go for one body stem. I think that's the CMP tie. But I should be able to get some extra energy now with my, um, of course, with my Polyrath, so I can maybe boost up later on. Let's see. They're going to swap out, and they have another Jellicent. And this is exactly why I think Obstagoon is just a little bit better for this team. If you want to run this team here, Obstagoon just helps out a little bit more against all the Jellicent right now. Jellicent is most likely the most common Pokemon to face in like higher up meta because this Pokemon just destroys Cresselia, destroys all the fighting type Pokemon right now, destroys sometimes at least Giratina depending on the matchup. So this Pokemon is, is just so versatile, there are next to no Pidgeots around anymore and um, yeah, we're going to see here right now that actually 
I would have been able to win this game if I played it better. I sure went for the power punch first. I did not expect that my scald would do that much damage. If I went for power punch immediately and then you went for scald later on, I would have been able to knock them out with that scald because of the attack buff, but I just didn't know. That's something that you can just figure out later on. But here we're going to have now the Polyrath against Polyrath. And here we're going to see that they're going to go for the Scald. The opponent is running Scald Ice Beam, which is the recommended moveset. I'm running a different moveset here just for a little bit more fun. And this is kind of awkward here for us because the opponent were able to get the debuff. If they didn't get the debuff, it would have been so much better for us as we would have been able to do so much more damage. It would have been mostly able to get them super low as well. But like this, we are sadly going to be forced to go for Night Slash with our um, Gliscor, and we didn't get a boost yet, so we're gonna get one boost now. I actually didn't know that we're gonna get a boost there right now, but that's kind of fitting. As they're going to have Polytoad in the back. That's kind of funny. They're running the double community day line there as well. I don't know if they're YouTuber as well, or if they just want to have fun in the Ultra League. Both of them is going to be fine. As they're going to be able to shield up the move, might be the Ice Beam, it is not. But I can go ahead and go for another Night Slash here, which is going to do a ton of damage because we're double boosted. And I can catch the move onto our Dub Wall, which still will be able to deal with the Galarian Stuntfisk as well. It's going to be the Ice Beam, which is really nice for us. And the Stuntfisk is coming back in as we can go for and Payback here. This is going to do a ton of damage. And this is also going to go ahead and force the opponent to most likely shoot up our next payback. Let's take a look at this one. We can shoot up the Earthquake here, which would do more damage than any Ice Beam here onto our Dub Wall. And I can go for one payback right now as well, which will be very nice as they're going to have to shield this move up. And I can swap out into my Glyscor in time as well, catching the move here, but it's going to be the Rock Slide. In comes now the Polytoad, of course, and I can still go for the Night Sash in time. This is going to knock them out from this range here. And in comes now the Stunfest, which still has to go for two Rock Sides. This is going to be a CMP tie after this one, and it's not going to work out for the opponent at all. So this is going to be it for this game again. Going to be a very easy one to win with our Glide score. This team honestly was so much fun to play. Next opponent, second to last game, we're going to encounter the Snorlax in the lead. This is going to be an interesting one as well. I'm going to swap out immediately. We have two fighting type fast moves in the back there. So why not swap out immediately? And you see me here going for the body stamp first. This is kind of unusual maybe, but um, it actually kind of helps with the clock itself because I, I was the one that swapped out first and double is a Pokemon that's fairly spammy. Um, this might allow me to swap out earlier later on, which might be very beneficial for me as I might get into my potty wrath then onto the next opponent before like they can knock me out here. Let's see, I will try to go ahead and go for another body slam here right now. They might going to be able to farm me down though, maybe I actually going to allow them that as well. Yes, I'm going to allow them to farm me down. But as you know already, as said before, Polyrath is actually a hard wall for the charge moves of the of the Stunfisk, Stunfisk I want to say, is Skunk Tank here. As the Skunk Tank is going to now go for another crunch. Going to still do some decent damage to be fair, but in comes now the Giratina. And here I make a mistake, I shouldn't have done that. I thought I might be kind of cool here by going for the Scald and trying to get the debuff. I never got any Scald debuff, by the way, and I went for Scald quite a lot of times. It's just my luck. You know my luck. You know my Reggie's still luck as well. But I will be able to now go ahead and go into my Gliska. I have a shield advantage. Dragon Claw does less damage than the body stem from the opponent's Snorlax. So I kind of want to keep my shields around for that. And so I'm going to let the first move go through. But what is about this second charge move here? I feel like I'm getting into the farm down range right now, so I don't really want to be in there, so I'm going to be able to force to shield this move up. I can still go for my own Night Slash right now, and they're actually going to let this move go through as well, which is going to allow me to have the matchup against these Snorlax. Can we outspeed them? They have some energy stored for sure. So it's going to be a very tough one, and I don't think I can get there. In time, I'm I don't I, honestly, I'm really surprised that I got there in time. I thought there are already a body stamp stored prior, so maybe I just mistaken something. Maybe I just couldn't count the energy, but I was so surprised that I get to the move there. As I can move on to the next game, final game for the day, we're going to have another horrible lead of Jellison in the lead. Uh, yeah, a lead of Jellison in the lead, very smart for me. But we will be able to swap out into our double here, which is going to be able to take the surf. And they're seemingly being weak against our dub wall in the back. Otherwise, they mostly would have stopped out already. But um, they're going to stay in here and go for the surf the entire time. Allowing me to go for the payback here straight away. That's going to do a ton of damage. Super effective damage. Going to do around yeah 60% damage there against the opponent. Allowing me to go for another payback here. And that's going to knock them out. Allowing me to get rid of the hardest answer already for our Poly Wrath. So, like this, we can now go for our body slam against the opponent Swampert. And here, maybe make a mistake, but it's a little bit tricky, not gonna lie. I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to the Polyrath, hoping that they have something in the back that I can take on. 
They're gonna go for a charge move. I'm forced to shield. This is going to be maybe an earthquake, and they're going to have a Trevenant in the back. And for whatever reason, they decide to shield this move up here, which is going to be nice for us. But it's still going to be a little bit tricky to deal with the Swampert in the back. And I make it, honestly, I make some mistakes here. I should have played this way differently. Honestly, that's definitely on me here, but you're going to see it anyway. I'm going to go for the Scald, all fine. Don't get the debuff, which would have been really good here, by the way. It would have been amazing to get the debuff right now. And here I make a mistake. I should have farmed up more with my Gliscor. Because I know that the opponent has a move start on the Swampert. That's why I swapped out basically immediately. I thought that they would throw earlier. But like this, sadly, the opponent going to have two charge moves and we're going to lose the last game. Which could have went either way, to be fair. Could have won this game for sure. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you haven't seen the video earlier on, there's going to be one on the screen right now for both Polytoad as well as the Polyrath, but in the Fossil Cup. And also from yesterday, I tried out the Shadow Polyrath. So if you're interested in those videos, check them out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.